In this video, I will teach you how to navigate through life and find your way. So first remember that a vector is just a direction and a magnitude. And it can be represented on, let's say, the plane by arrow. So let's say we have these two linearly independent vectors E1 and E2. They're linearly independent and they span this plane, so it forms a basis. So let's just call that basis E. Next, consider another set of linearly independent vectors. So let's just take this direction and this direction, right? Call this one B1 and this direction B2. Well, it's linearly independent and also spanning. So it's another basis. Technically, it's an ordered basis. The order matters. So let's just consider this vector, let's say V. Then how can you describe V in either of the bases? In the basis E, it goes one unit in the E1 direction and one unit in the E2 direction. So we would write this as 1, 1, because there's 1, there's 1. If we were to write this in the B, B basis, then it goes 1 unit in the B1 direction and then 0 units in the B2. So I would write this in the B basis as 1, 0, because there's 1 and 0. So now how can we go from one to the other? B1 and B2 are vectors that we can describe in the E1 and E2 basis. Namely, B1 will be 1, 1 because it goes one unit in the E1 direction, one unit in the E2 direction. B2 goes one unit in the E2 direction and negative one unit in the E1 direction. So B1, B2 looks like this in the E basis. So now let's substitute this in. So we get some expression like this. Now notice that we can rewrite this as a matrix equation. One, negative one, one, one times one, zero. And it's no coincidence that this and this are the same thing. What we have here is called the change of coordinate matrix because what happens if we do matrix multiplication, we get one and one, which is the same as writing it in the E coordinate. So if we let P sub B be this matrix, then we can rewrite our equation as the matrix P sub B times the vector written in the B coordinate is equal to the vector in the E coordinate, where in general, the columns of your change of coordinate matrix would be the basis vectors that you have here written in the coordinates that you want to get to. Or a more useful formulation is that if you have everything in one of the coordinates over here, you can change coordinates into the B coordinate. So let's do another example. So let's say I have this vector W, which I'm imagining goes two units in the E1 direction and one unit in the E2 direction. So W in the E basis will be two, one, right? Two, two units in the E direction, E1 direction, one unit in the E2 direction. Now, how can I write this in the B basis? It looks like in order to get something like this, I'll have to go a little bit more in the B1 direction and then go negative some units in the B2 direction. But I don't know by how much but I can use my change of basis formula. So I need to compute the inverse of this uh, change of coordinate matrix. The inverse formula for a two by two is one over the determinant, which is one minus minus one. So one plus one is two. And then I switch these, which is the same thing. And then I put a negative sign on both of these things. So this is one and negative one. So this is my inverse matrix. So I get that this will be two plus one, negative two plus one is negative one. So my W vector in the B basis was I extend this 1.5 amounts and then I go down half as much B2, which kind of looks like it's correct. If we had nice graph paper, then I could have made a better drawing. And so this is how you use a change of coordinate matrix. Uh, sometimes vectors look nicer in a certain coordinate and so the calculations will be better and that's why you would ever use such a thing. 